How y'all doing? Thank you for coming out this evening. Uh, I'm Keith Dudding. I've got a radio show on KDHX, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is that you're here on this hot August night. But you live in St. Louis, so I think you know what to expect. So give yourselves a round of applause. You make more breeze that way, so clap a lot tonight. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming out this evening. Uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing these gentlemen for quite some time, and it's even greater pleasure that they still admit to knowing me. And if it's not a pleasure to know Joe Newberry and Mike Compton, you just don't know what pleasure is. Joe is originally from Missouri, as he'll tell you, and uh, moved to the southeast United States, would not budge from there except to come back and visit his, his native soil. Good to have you back here. And Mike Compton, not enough can be said about Mike Compton, so I'm not even going to try. This is just my first opportunity in a long time to tell people something very obvious, and that's who they've come to see, and it ain't me. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Compton and Joe Newberry. Thanks, Keith. You seem to, and I lost the words this evening. That's all right. He sent me a picture of my clothes earlier, and I thought, well, all right, now that's just creepy. <laughs> How are y'all? It being Missouri, I'm going to tune my guitar again. How's everybody on this hot Wednesday night? We want to thank the focal point for having a little bit of Tennessee breakdown. Mike and I had a, uh, a booming 2020 planned, and 2021 even, and things changed. And so this run, it's the first time we've played together since January of 2020. And we are having a ball, and we thank you for coming out and supporting live music, because that's how it works. And everybody's staying safe, everybody's being good work. We're, we've moved to the sociably distanced now, instead of socially distanced. So everybody's very friendly and very happy, but hello, and we'll wave like that. Here's, here's a big hit from 2019. <laughs> Baby, 
and she has her fun. She's my Alabama baby. She showed us no worse clothes. She's the hottest thing in town. Oh, Lord, hey, how she can love. She does the monkey in the daytime, but she me at the night. She's my Alabama baby, and she shakes her right. She's my Alabama baby. since about 2003 and I've never played it much because the, the tuners didn't work on it very well and it just made me sick. I've been playing it almost exclusively since about last fall and it's it's really coming around but it, it don't know what to do <laughs> right, right now. It's, you know, it's going all over the place. <laughs> I thought, so I'll be whipping the tuner out frequently. And I know you got I don't know how to tell you this, but this is a banjo, so <laughs> here we are. <laughs> you know, we, we were talking about this last night. Um, a, a lot of musicians, how many musicians are, are here? Yeah, yeah. In, instrument owners, how many of you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of times folks will say, ah, oh, tuning, uh, that tuning's close enough for rock and roll. Ah, it's close enough for country. It's close. We actually like being in good tune. We sort of consider ourselves like the aircraft mechanics of the musical world, you know, like you're sitting there in your seat and you see them working on the engine. You don't mind waiting, do you? <laughs> Same deal with our tuning. We want to make sure we're in as good a tune as we can given the conditions in the studio. We'll do a number for you from West Virginia from the singing and playing of Lester and Linda McCumbers. <coughs> There's Cherry River Line. I saw my little 
glass in her hand. She was drinking down her troubles with another man. So I told the little girl, you go and do the best you can. I'll get another woman like you got another man. It is lonesome days, lonesome all the time. Lonesome down here on the cherry Texas gals or Texas gales will not try and uh, <laughs> play the play the fire out of it. The, the other night I got started so fast it's like I, I got behind myself. It's like it's got excited like a little squirrel. It was a little squirrel like. <laughs> yes, it was. Maybe Curtis can put it on his new project. Anyway. <laughs> Texas gals. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. That's, uh, that was respectable tempo. Well, it was not, yes, it was not out of bounds, but it was. Was uh, doing a gig with David Greer years ago, and uh, he wanted to play Tennessee blues. So I kicked it off. Yeah. Hey, have you, any of you ever kicked off anything a little but not exactly at the tempo you wanted to play it at? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what guy had got into me, but it was uh, moving along pretty sprite. And uh, <laughs> I got into it, I thought, oh no. <laughs> and I looked over at David, and David was going, <laughs> I don't know what he was saying, but it didn't look nice. <laughs> <laughs> there were no lip readers. Yeah, we got through it, but he just looked at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what you got now? Let's do a, a slight one a little bit slower. Okay. Maybe Cumberland Gap. My folks came for it, uh, through the, to, from North Carolina through the Cumberland Gap. It's a great tune. It's uh, played a lot of different ways. This is the way we play it. it uh, we took it from Gate to Carlton. Sort of, sort of contemplative. It's not. It would be about the tempo you'd play something if you were sitting looking at a mule's ass all day long. <laughs> You're right. I, this, that's the picture I get when I think about going across the Cumberland Gap, just sitting there. I'll never think of it any other way. <laughs> Sober in the Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap. Wake up sober in the Cumberland Gap. Uh, next 
so one of the more kinder, gentler blues. It's a song about love gone wrong with uh, not taking any personal accountability for the demise of the relationship. Just blaming it on everybody else. <laughs> Unknown, unforeseen circumstances, I think, what he's, he's implying here. It's called that long. year and a half. Not nothing, nothing to talk about, apparently. Well, I was happy that the, the muse came to visit me for a while. I got a bunch, a bunch of tunes and songs that I didn't have before. So I guess it was fortunate I didn't have any work <laughs> to go to. We had a great looking calendar, I think Joe mentioned. By 
by April it was all gone. Completely. <laughs> but I didn't feel bad because everybody else that I talked to was in the same boat. Same it's boat. just like, no, it don't matter how much, how, how much fame and fortune and, or uh, the big of a crowd there is used to, nobody had any. I must say I prefer this better. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote this song um, in England at the world's most aptly named music camp. It's called Sore Fingers. They work you like a government mule. But by about Thursday, you're playing, you play all day long and you do sessions and workshops and concerts and so. By Wednesday or Thursday, you're feeling like, well, there's there's music in here and it's coming out here, and that that's what happened. I was walking to breakfast, and a friend of mine said, "Did you hear those larks this morning? They were singing as they rose." And I thought, well, I like that a lot. And I went and wrote a song before dinner time that night, and uh, it mentions all of my my relatives who are up in heaven. My mother and my dad and my sister my sister my late sister was a pastor so on the third verse when you hear me sing sisters preaching as she rises you better believe it up on the mountain mother is singing laughing and shouting her sweet voice is ringing hey no mind the dark and stormy sky mother y'all hear something that you can sing to then feel free that would have been a good one my, my bad <laughs> uh -huh. 
Okay. That's what you ought to do. They don't have to be good. Just need to do it. Just loud. My, my grandma Weeks lived her whole life under that premise. And certainly about with her singing, she sounded like a siren going down the street. But she loved it. She loved it as good as anybody I ever met. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Come on now, we talked about this last night. Good Lord. <laughs> it's a two-part word. It's show and business, and I, I've got the business part down, but the show, it's been a while. And then I figure if that's the worst thing that happens to me tonight, that's going to be all right. I'll tune the banjo. Thank you. <laughs> She sounds like she knows you. We've had to rename this and uh, adopt a new uh, introduction policy for tunes. We, I introduced this one night and uh, launched off into a different tune, which surprised us both, I, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> And we got to the end of it. We were the only ones that knew, I think, but uh, we've, we've taken the introducing them at the end. Just in case. <laughs> Sound close. We better, close. We better, we better hit it while we're there. again.
You know, it's one of those things, it's like, don't talk about it, don't talk about it. That's why, so um, you have to have something on the set list. So we usually just put Voldemort on the set list, you know, the tune that you dare not speak its name. And um, the, the tune Mike started out was Alabama Gals, and we were trying to play The Little Dutch Girl, which we finally morphed around to it. It's, how many know, it's like three notes different. Let's see. That's Alabama in there. <laughs> but when he, when he went, I went with him. That's what you do. So. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed both of those tunes. Yes. Yeah. Let's do a Benny Martin song. You should be commended for even knowing who Benny Martin is these days anymore. I'm sure all the fiddle players do. But... I never heard Benny do this. I, I wished I had, but uh, I heard Hartford do it at, uh, maybe about twice over the period of five or six years. I thought, well, that's a good song right there. It's one maybe I could even do. And, uh, I forgot about it till a few years after John had, had passed and, and uh, remembered it, so I, I went to look at it. I found a copy of it on the internet. Uh, there's a good version of him playing this if you so uh, desire to hear his version of it. It's called Silvertone Blues. It's about ordering a uh, Silvertone guitar through the mail. And uh, Benny's, Benny's version of it, uh, he got the the guitar delivered to him on horseback, but the, the mail was still being carried by horses back then. He went and picked it up. Silver Tumbler.
I just like that. <laughs> Yes, sir. All right, what you see down there that you want to do? Uh, no, 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 no. Too darker. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do one more. We'll take a little break. As our friend Jim Watson says, we'll take a five-minute break for ten minutes. We'll see you in 20. We, um, any musician will tell you, really, that the holidays... Well, they're just around the corner. <laughs> Imagine the joy in a child's face on a Christmas morning. Or that hard-to-buy seventh night of Hanukkah present. A Compton and Newberry CD or a CD from Mike or a CD from Joe. It'll, it'll make your holidays. So thank you for coming. And we'll do one more. The darker the night, the better I see. <laughs> I wrote this. I wrote this song because some come, uh, a lady came up to me at a, a show and she started her conversation with me like this. <laughs> nice. Nice. I said, "Well, that's really no way to start a conversation." She went, <laughs> "Can you not write a fun song?" So this is my attempt, my poor, pitiful attempt at writing a fun song. It takes a its name from a fiddle tune in Western North Carolina. I've honked town most all of my life. My day began at the edge of the night. I stay up late and don't bother me. Because the darker the night, the darker the night, the better I see. Sorry. Right. Oh, the lights I love are the lights of town. I thank the Lord above when the sun goes down. Find a shady spot, hardest working man in show business, give my hand up. That's where I'll be. Better I see. I'm I hit the rain. Has a boundary call. I guarantee she won't be bored. Starts getting good. Round quarter to three. Oh, the darker the night, the darker the night, the better I see. The darker the night, the better I see. 
ain't I a sight? Dark of the night, the better I see. We'll see you in a minute. Good recovery. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. How incredible was that first set? Well, we're so happy that you all made it through the, the warmer set. Uh, tonight, uh, 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 it feels like the temperature is getting a lot better. Thank you all for coming out on one of the hottest days of the year to hear one of the hottest groups we've had through here. Let's uh, give them a little round of applause, and I'm going to give a little announcement before we bring them back up. All right. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, Compton and Newbury. We're halfway to Sunday, so we'll do a Stanley Brothers Gospel number for you. Steer me on your righteous path.
change I never witnessed If he loves me playing short Gathered there around that stranger Test fate again. No. <laughs> All right. This is this is a fun one, anyhow. Maybe any fans of Hobart Smith in the crowd? Thank you both. <laughs> When I was a young uh, banjo player, all young banjo players want they want to play fast. They want to anger the dogs and they want to play fast. And uh, usually I would play half fast. And then I heard Hobart Smith play, and, and Hobart uh, he played fast, but Lordy, he played clean. And so uh, this is a this is an actual it's a banjo tune it didn't start as a fiddle tune and then morph into anything else it started as a banjo tune it's called last chance it's tuned in f c f c d starting from, from the fifth string and if you uh if you have trouble remembering it just think of your friend newberry's elementary school report card f c f c d and you know these little tuners are great but uh for this one i'm gonna go over and and temper the banjo to to mike's mandolin so give me just a sec Thank you. 
was when she left me, she'd go to stay. But now she's gone, and I don't worry, because I'm sitting on top of the world. It was all of the summer. Need your car me running, hold it out your hand. I can get me a woman just as quick as you got your man. <laughs> Need to come and run in, poking out your hand. I forgot the third verse. I can get me a woman just as quick as you got your man. But now she's gone, and I don't believe because I'm sitting. Mind is a terrible thing to waste. I was going to mention that y'all could sing on that one, and I forgot to do it. I mean, we did. You're warming up. We could do it. This is an old windy crap, I can tell you. Yes, sir. All right. Let's do that. We'll get down to where it says special, if not. All right. Let's do the other one. <laughs> This is the first tune, one of the first tunes I learned out of after I had uh, retaught myself how to read music. And, and uh, years ago, Nashville Bluegrass Band was doing a, a, a series of things with the Nashville Symphony, and uh, it seemed like it was around Christmas time. While well, we were doing the rehearsing for the for the program, while the conductor would. Uh, give us the cue and we're sitting there going is it time for us to play yet and then he'd just have to stop everything and uh, it, was it was frustrating to the people who could read and, and it was embarrassing for us because we didn't know when to come in and I swore at that point that I would be caught in that situation again so I spent that winter relearning how to read music and I had a book 
that was put out for, for little kids it was given to me by Butch Baldessari, oddly enough. It's called I Can Read Music and had had music notes in it about the size of a butter bean. <laughs> and and they got gradually smaller as you got through the through the towards the end of the book. And that's what I learned how to read music with. And uh, I learned this one out of a fiddle. I bought, went out and bought fiddle tune books, and this was one of the ones that was in the book. And I didn't know at the time that I learned it. I just learned it because it, I loved the sound of it. But uh, it appears that people, a lot of people loved this tune and loved it for a really long time. So long, in fact, that nobody would play it anymore because they were all sick of it. <laughs> so I, did, I didn't have anybody to play this tune with until uh, I met Joe and I mentioned it to him, and he lit up like a Christmas tree. So. It's like I, I moved to North Carolina a long time ago, and I, I had not heard Old Melendi in a long time. And so I, he said, you would want to play this Old Melendi tune, which and I went, Old Melendi. And uh, I, I first heard it from the, those great tapes of uh, Bob Walters from Nebraska. Oh yeah. And Bob and, and his wife Goldie, who would play the pump organ, the horse-drawn wagon with the pump organ, portable pump organ, and Goldie would be, she'd be there, and you'd hear she like uh, she'd be playing like, and then on some tunes she she'd let out a wee whoopee, and ladies and gentlemen, that's sort of how playing old Melindy feels when I play with Mike Compton.
Thank you. I really like that. Now what should we do? Whatever we want. We could do the old musician trick of saying, well, if you want to hear something, just write it down on the back of a $20 bill and pass it for Right about now, Bill Monroe would say, we have any requests? And they'd holler all kinds of stuff and he'd say, yes, sir, Blue Moon in Kentucky will do that for you right now. <laughs> We could do a Monroe Brothers number, we could do a Monroe piece, we could do whatever you want. Let's do this. We're going to call for the Mississippi Waltz. Kentucky Waltz, and thank you. And the Kentucky Waltz will do that for you right now. Yeah. Yeah. For a minute, oh, I went into Kentucky Waltz. I've gone crazy. Oh, well, we can do that if you want. Now nah, we'll do this. Okay. Nah. <laughs> We've got I see a fan's here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> this was uh, recorded in in the mid '30s by Bill and Charlie Monroe. They slipped them into a session for Bluebird. Um, in Charlotte, North Carolina, I think uh, the Delmore brothers were on one side. I, I don't know who was on the other side. I of can't the, remember. But they, they, they came off the road. They put those beautiful Dobbs hats down in the corner. They recorded 12 sides. I just love the image of those good-looking, strapping Kentucky boys. Next. Next. And this is one of those sides. This is what would you give in exchange for your soul. Thank you. 
This tune. It's uh, one of it's one of the uh, the the, trilo the Trinity. Hmm. This is the back in 1977 when I moved to Nashville, Tennessee. This is a man when I took with me. Played on it for till about 81, almost 80. And I bought the Gilchrist. Actually, the first the first Gilchrist this was bought in the U.S. purely by accident. And uh, this one started changing hands. And uh, you'll be happy to know that now it lives in St. Louis. Yeah. <laughs> well, some of you will be happy to know that now it lives in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's got the mandolin cr uh, cross key. This is uh, um, when you heard Monroe's sing of, uh, he played an old tune called Soldier's Joy, then he played one called The Boston Boy. The greatest of all was Jenny Lynn. To me, that's where the fiddle begins. And this is Jenny Lynn, and a lot of pe people don't play it very much, and it sure is a pretty tune, right? You can hear about a nickel's worth of it on uh, the, the, the song, Uncle Penn, they, but they only play half of it. This is, this is the whole thing.
I was at a I was at a festival one time and a woman who had been a little bit overserved, she sort of came up to me and she said Do you know the Trinity? And I I thought about where I was and I thought about who she was and I said Soldier's Joy, Boston Boy, and Jenny Lynn, she went you're damn right. <laughs> you know who that is. I know who that was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I think probably you you outwitted her is what I think. <laughs> She's like, well, okay. It wasn't too yeah. much of a it okay. wasn't too much of a struggle. <laughs> what you want to put in there, Hoss, we and we can uh, play anything on them, we can play, play whatever we want. They could shout out numbers from the crowd and we could turn them down. 17. Play a waltz. Play a waltz.
This tune has uh, several names, among, among them uh, Ruffled Drawers. <laughs> it's nothing to do with furniture. Ruffle is a little bit, slightly different melody. Whenever I was uh, about 18, I had summer jobs, was working for, my daddy worked for a lumber company in uh, town, and so he was uh, familiar with all of the contractors and all the, all the folks, that, all the old guys that were sort of worked on there by themselves, and uh, I was sort of carpenter's helper. Uh, just toting cinder blocks and two before us and doing stuff. And most of the time just hanging out with one of, one of, of two men that were, uh, Old, probably in their 70s at that point uh, and it was just the right pace for me because I didn't get in a big hurry you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, one of the guys was sort of a, a man of uh, somewhat short stature but uh, it's sort of like uh, uh, April Birds that Joe plays with when when she takes stand someplace, you know that's where she's standing. That there ain't no doubt where she's at. She's right there, and he was the same way. It's like when he stood someplace, that's where he was. <laughs> and uh, it, it, everybody, a lot of people called him Red. His last name was Long. When a short guy named Long, <laughs> and he, some people called him Shorty. We, we we used to sit and eat lunch in the sun in the in the summertime, eating pudding out of a cup and all that kind of stuff, you know. And, and uh, he told me one day that whenever he was a kid uh, going to school, that none of the girls would would hang out with the boys from the country because none of them had any money. And uh, he devised a a plan when he was walking to school every morning. He would pick up scrap metal and, and washers and nails and stuff that he found along the way and put them in his pocket. But whenever he got to school, he'd, he'd rattle his pocket. Uh, make, it, make it sound like he had some change. <laughs> and he said, wouldn't be nothing but a pocket full of junk. But he said, usually I'd have maybe like a nickel or a dime in there, but that's about all the money there was to be had. And, and uh, was enough to get a Coke and a, or a knee high and a, sometimes go to a movie, but, but most of the time just just get a date, you know. And I can't really play this tune without thinking about Mr. Long. That's called the New Five Cents.
cheese fondue. <laughs> what a gem, what a jewel the focal point is. Well, uh, yeah, just uh, an amazing place to play um, in, in these hard times. They branded an outdoor series and got excited about it. And thank you for coming out tonight. Um, we, uh, I, I actually, you never know when you're going to have family show up. Skyler, uh, my cousin Skyler is here. So, uh, uh, yet another, there's another Newberry in the crowd. And what a Jim Nelson is, by the way. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jim Nelson. He's a Jim. Well, Curtis is pretty good, too. He's a little squirrely, but he's all right. He's a lot squirrely, actually, I think. Can we play Rocky Allen? I don't know. I'll try. <laughs> um, Skyler is my cousin Dan's son, and uh, I don't think you ever have ever heard this story. Uh, my grandmother was a preacher's wife, and she um, she was you know she did all the preacher's wife stuff. The one thing she could not abide was gossip. She did not like gossip, and she called the people who gossiped male and female, she called them hens. And I said one time, Grandmother, why did you? Why do you call them hens? And she said, oh, they sit at the back of the church and they do this. <laughs> and uh, somebody came up to Grandmother one time and they said, uh, Sister Arthur, you are so sweet. You are so dear. You could find something nice to say about the devil himself. And she fixed him with that steely eye and she said, well, at least he keeps to his own business. <laughs> so we'll play play uh, play this tune. Uh, she had a she had a, a a phrase called Baptist mouth, and that's when when the hens would hear something they didn't like, they they do this. <laughs> this tune had this song has a little uh, maybe a little Baptist mouth in it.
I looked at her, wished my wife was dead. I'm going to Rocky Island, Albany Hall. See my cave at all in the I went up on the mountain, fell over on my knees. I thought I'd let myself a bit to hear that again to see. This one in a long time, cool. yesterday. When I was right before I turned teenage, uh, I was down in one of my papa's fields and he showed me this tree that was about, well, about 10 or 12 feet tall. It's pulling these little nuts off of it. I asked him what it was and he, he said it was a chicken pen tree. It had maybe just like a little handful of nuts on it, and that was the only time that I had been introduced to a chicken pen tree. <laughs> and since, I, I didn't know what it was, and, and certainly didn't know the story about them, how they, they had all got wiped out by the blight. But the tree didn't live a whole lot longer, and uh, lived out the rest of its life down there in the pasture. I've seen one since, we got thinking about this yesterday. Uh, Thank you, Ben. I hope I play it halfway right.
ladies and gentlemen, my compliment for you for Thank you very much, Mr. Joe Newberry, multi instrumentalist. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.